Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see here on our channel, our website, or our social media. Reach out to me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. And today we're discussing a model launched back in 1999, and with original tritium hands, this is one of the newest watches that I could describe in earnest as a vintage Jaeger Le Coult. It is the Reverso Night and Day in white gold. It uses the 1990s Grand Tie case, which at the time was considered to be the large Reverso, 42.2 millimeters from lug to lug, by 9.8 millimeters thick, by 26.1 millimeters wide. The watch here is paired with an uncommon and exquisite JLC factory white gold bracelet to match the case. We'll throw it on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, and I can mention I've owned two Reverso in this size, and it really is a perfect match for a smaller wrist. I could recommend it for a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference, though especially on this full integrated bracelet, it has the presence to withstand even a hulking forearm. Even if you've got that 17, 18, 19 centimeter circumference wrist on the bracelet, this watch is still going to have an impressive presence. As you can see, it's also quite flat and easily fits underneath the cuff. There's the head-on shot. There's the down the barrel shot. Let's take a look at the bracelet. The bracelet, like the case, is made in-house by JLC. JLC has the ability to make bracelets and clasps and cases, not just movements. And you can see internally, this white gold bracelet features a white gold clasp to match. The JLC maker's mark is on the folding part of the clasp, so you know this is all Jaeger Le Coult. No expense spared. You can see that the removable links are fixed in place by screws, not pins or sleeves. And on the underside, there are hollows to avoid pinching skin, pulling hair, or trapping wrist heat. The Reverso is more shapely and complex than it often appears online, where you usually get this rectangular soldier shot from the front, and you miss the handsome curvature of the case. This is the Art Deco era at its best, a combination of creases and curves with those engraved gadroons wrapping all the way around the case and the conical squared off ends of the case. It is a lovely array of curves and creases, different planes and focal points that dance across the surface of your eye. It is candy for your rods and cones. It's a gorgeous case. This one gets even better on the dial side. The night and day includes three complications, a power reserve indicator, an AM, PM, and of course a moon phase coaxial with the small seconds. It features lovely lacquered I'm going to call them Art Nouveau style numerals because although the Reverso coined 1931 is a product of the Art Deco era, the numerals used here, they actually recall an earlier artistic era of style, Art Nouveau, and that's very much what you get in those numerals. The dial is a lovely lacquered black. You can see there is a railroad track inboard, but it's segmented by the sub-registers. The hands themselves are original factory tritium. As back in 1999, JLC was still using tritium on its dials. And you can see that the watch features a power reserve indicator for its manual wind caliber 823. When fully wound, it has 45 hours of reserve de mosh. And of course, there is that poetic night and day indicator. For those of you who think moon phase complications move too slowly, you have the rise of the sun as well as the stars. Now, the watch includes a manufacturer movement based on the 822. This is the 823. It is a 23 joule movement adjusted in five positions, which is the high horology standard and what you'll see on chronometers. Now, the movement itself features a traditional pocket watch style center wheel architecture like many reversos do. And this basic movement architecture was designed for the Grand Tie Reverso case, which is why it's both sized and shaped properly for the case. It beats away at 21,600 vibrations per hour, and as you can see, it is nicely finished with Cote de Genève real fired blue, not chemically dyed screws. There is a beveling on the edge of the bridges, and the satination of the wheels is exquisite. There's also engine turning or perlage on the base plate, all of this water resistant down to 30 meters. You can see the internal chassis has been engine turned. Again, the JLC maker's mark. This is a JLC case, and the reverse side of the case is entirely of high polish and still with an original case back sticker, all of which is to say the condition of this watch is outstanding. It would be recognizable to those first British polo players in India who asked for a watch whose glass crystal at the time would not be shattered by mallets. Lecoultre's then idea was to subcontract the design of a case that could be flipped to protect 
the crystal by showing only its steel reverse side. After polo, it could be flipped back to show the time. But in the modern era, the Reverso is not a sports watch, so JLC has reimagined its design classic as a dual-sided watch with either an exquisite display case back or a second dial with a complication on the reverse side. Going strong, since 1931, we are coming up on the 90th anniversary of the Reverso, never stronger than it is today, with the night and day. Email tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.